Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to beat Explorer's Eve Part 4, which means the End, the Harbinger, and the rest of the Witherstorm, along with miscellaneous Aether content. So without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. Straight into the Aether, here are the two dungeons you need to know about. That is the Gold Dungeon, the harder of these two, and over there in the sky is the Platinum Dungeon also quite difficult. Both of them, you need to be very careful, and both of them aren't real dungeons. They're really boss arenas more than anything. This one is the Air Whale King, and this one I also find to be incredibly difficult. I recommend getting some very good gear for this. Gravitite, I'd strongly recommend for this. Not to mention, if you have Gravitite, then there's a very strong incentive for doing this, since when you do this, you get the Gravitite Gloves and Pendant, which allows you to jump absurdly high. So, to get an idea of what this fight is like, you right click on that stone and turn on your subtitles. This thing will absolutely wreck you, so you have to be very careful or else you'll just die fall damage. That was very unlucky, but make sure to stay on the ground. Also. The Air Whale King will bypass your shield a lot of the time due to the fact that it inflicts a very long cooldown. However, the Gravitite Shield is exempt from this, so make sure to bring yourself a Gravitite Shield to this battle. For this fight, when it goes onto the ground, start attacking it. It's invincible otherwise. And while you can do this fight with other shields, the Gravitite Shield is the best one for this, so keep that in mind. Once you're attacking it, it will go down slowly. So, of course, you get the super high jump and another very powerful treasure, the Hammer of King Bee Dogs. But be careful, Phase 2 introduces fog into the fight, hence why I highly recommend subtitles. Once you open the chest, here's what you'll get. Hammer of King Bee Dogs, Bronze Dungeon Map, and then a Charm of Life, along with your Gravitite things to give you the absurdly high jump. I recommend testing Gravitite for yourself. As for the Hammer of King Bee Dogs, it comes with Sweeping Edge, Knockback, or Looting. We'll get two of those three. But it's very strong. That projectile flies quite fast, and it inflicts a large amount of knockback. Due to its power, I'd do the Platinum Dungeon anyways. Inside here, we have the Sun Spirit, the hardest boss in the Aether. And uh, he is not to be messed with. If you have music enabled, he will start playing boss music the moment you go inside, and then you have to interact with him a whole bunch before he will actually fight you. So after giving his long, edgy speech, then you are finally able to begin the fight. So I'm uh, a little damaged, so let's fix that real quick. Make sure that you have some really good healing items. So like this, and now I'm going to regenerate like crazy so that way I don't die during recording. And like this, he is going to bounce around the arena and light you on fire. I am not being lit on fire, I'm not entirely sure why, might be because I have too much regeneration, but these projectiles right here will deal an obscene amount of damage. Don't get hit by these fire crystals, because just like that, look at how much damage I took. So be very careful. But if you deflect those ice ones back at him, then he will take a bunch of damage. Essentially, this is a wait around boss fight. Make sure that you take down his minions mainly because they're just annoying. And make sure to get those ice balls back at him. Because he will, well, drain you very slowly with all the fire. The more you attack him, the crazier it gets. Eventually, he has a stationary phase, unleashes more fire crystals, all that. You can deflect the fire crystals, but overall, this is a very tough fight. So only come in here if you have a nearby spawn point and are very brave. Once the sun spirit is now dead, then you're able to open the chest. Also, this clip has no audio besides me talking, mainly because this video was originally 38 minutes long and yeah, that's not very fun. So, inside the chest, there is Phoenix Armor, which is Diamond Armor, but it gives you fire resistance if you wear the gloves. Then, Coruscant Panels, all six that you need, miscellaneous Aether items, 
and then you'll get the Shield of Repulsion, as in Skeleton Cheese. I don't say it's better than the Regeneration Stone, but it definitely has its uses. And then, after all that, you also get the Phoenix Cape, which sucks. Mainly because it's inconsistent in triggering. If you already have the Agility Cape, then I'd go with the Agility Cape unless you're in the end, because even though it's relatively inconsistent, who knows, might save you once or twice. And with, with the Aether now completed, there are a couple more things that I need to go over. The End and the Harbinger. Both are redstone heart sources, which means you're going to have to take them on or go to blue skies, which was discussed last video. And the Harbinger, I'd say, for now at least, is the worst of the three sources. Sure, you can get the skulls for the Wither and the Nether, considering looting is massively buffed against specifically Wither skulls. And, of course, the Harbinger is surprisingly quite easy despite being a mechanized wither, but its drops are pretty lackluster. However, that is going to be changed in a couple of months as this mod moves on to future versions of Cataclysm mod, which will give it some new drops. So, in this case, it might be more viable later on, but for now, it drops a relatively mid treasure, but it's still worth trying out at least once. As for the wither itself, it's a little bit stronger now, so I'm going to be using some commands on it in order to accelerate the fight a bit more. So, as you progressively deal damage to it, you're going to notice some of its new attacks. So, of course, it will chase you around like a normal wither. I highly recommend fighting it deep underground, but say I hypothetically deal some damage. Now, it's going to resummon itself as an attack. It doesn't actually regenerate during that, it will go back to its normal health but it will become invincible and force you away. So be careful when it does that. So gonna damage it some more. You'll notice even more skulls. The main head will now participate in the fight instead of only occasionally firing the blue skulls. So be very careful. And then deal a bit more damage to it. We have phase two. So of course you fight it relatively normally, run away or block with a shield when it does that and it has wither armor. You'd think that this would go a lot faster, but it has a new attack on top of all this. So with the explosions out of the way, then you'll notice the charge is back. It's gonna teleport around and fire even more skulls. So be very careful during this. And one bad explosion might as well end you. And then once you finally defeat it, then it will drop another star. That's right, you get nothing extra from this. Craft yourself the redstone locator, totally not a mech eye. Using these ingredients, note eyes of ender need tainted dust as well. And then with one of these, you'll be able to track down the abandoned lab. So getting myself the redstone locator, this works exactly like an eye of ender, except it will not break. So follow this around, might take a couple of thousand blocks and then dig down to find the abandoned lab. Once you're done with the redstone locator, you'll find yourself the abandoned lab. Inside here, very small area, it will become larger in future versions, and you'll see the harbinger lying here inactive. You have to give it your nether star. Since the redstone locator won't consume the nether star, you only need one for this, and this thing can be quite painful. But fortunately, it's quite easy as well. It's really a matter of how much, well, endurance do you have. Do you have any enchantments? If yes, this should be quite easy. It's a matter of can you actually hit it and not stand there and watch as your armor breaks. If you can hit it, then it's pretty easy. Otherwise, maybe not your best choice. So, put in your nether star and it will power up. I am not geared for this. I mean, look at my ranged weapons. I have an ice bow and a cloud staff. So, you're gonna have to get some good ranged weapons before attempting this. You'll notice this is uh, quite difficult for me because, of course, I cannot play the game while talking like this. But progressively start damaging it. Walking backwards is a pretty good way of dealing with it. 
and occasionally it will fire missiles. You have to hide behind cover or use a shield to deal. Phase 2, it will become resistant to projectiles, but actually become manageable. So, you see that? It's going to obliterate me. However, if you use one of these columns to protect yourself, you can press that button there in order to activate an EMP to take it on directly as it's stunned. From all this, you'll get the Wither Assault Shoulder Cannon, useless item, the Redstone Heart, necessary for the command block, and then the Charm of Life. So, not very good loot, but it's pretty easy for what you get. When it comes down to the Harbinger's Drop, it's not very useful. It looks super cool, but its skull attack doesn't deal enough damage, and the Howitzer is literally a soul cannon. And the thing is, the Soul Cannon normally doesn't consume HP to fire, that's because I'm using the non-Explorer's Treasure version, but they have the same AoE. One inflicts Wither for like 2 seconds or something, and the other one can light enemies on fire. So the Soul Cannon still wins out, especially because it's a lot easier to obtain. So use the Soul Cannon, don't really use the Wither Assault Shoulder weapon. As for the Harbinger itself, it works only because it's pretty easy to do in comparison to the end or blue skies. Because you can go to the nether, get 3 skulls, fight the wither, redstone locator, harbinger, and the redstone heart is solved. So it's definitely an option you can do, although it's not my favorite option. For that, I'd say going to blue skies is your best bet, specifically the everdon. So try it out, but don't expect super high results. Or the next step of this journey, the end. Although initially quite intimidating, I mean, getting all the ender pearls in the first place is very tough, I recommend using the Lich to get them. Once you hop in, you're actually safe from the Wither Storm for a while, since as long as the ender, not dragon, but ender Trigon is alive, then you will be safe from the Wither Storm. So, it will have to do its whole summoning thing, be quite noisy, probably drown me out, but it will summon itself on this more unique end island, and then you'll fight the Trigon. I highly recommend getting something to deal with the fall damage, and no, I don't mean like a water bucket or a powder snow bucket, not even simple ender pearls, although you could do that. I'm saying a little bit more like slow falling, sentry boots, peacock, feather fan, etc. For the most part, the Trigon is very similar to the original dragon fight. There are its little babies going to be flying around, make sure to destroy their eggs or take them down quickly since they'll damage you a lot. And if it bites you and carries you into the air, you can block the repeated bites with a shield. Once defeated, you'll get a ton of experience. Out here on the end outer islands, you'll notice that the terrain is quite different now. This terrain includes a nullscape mod, which means it's going to be a lot more 3D and overall quite a bit more treacherous. There's also these weird areas with dead coral, bone trees, and uh, more weird blocks. This is also part of nullscape. Nothing to really see here. Besides, end cities can still generate. Luckily though, there are mountains around, and also star flares. Star flares aren't terribly important for the time being, but you can also use Eyes of Ender to find good structures around here. So keep exploring, make sure that you have ender pearls or some way to navigate this place. Since, considering how slow it is moving around here, the Witherstorm has a pretty good chance of catching up. Make sure you start going here on your distraction break, otherwise you're going to be in for quite the painful time. If the Witherstorm, well, very terrifyingly, starts chasing here, I recommend hunkering down on a big island. Here we have an end city, no ship, so you're only really going to get shulker boxes from there, which is still incredibly useful, but otherwise, find an island like this and hide. You're not going to do yourself any favors from trying to run from it, especially since there's no elytras here. Once you're exploring a bit, you may wonder, why do I need Eyes of Ender? 
You'll just think that it's a vanilla thing that you don't do anything with them and pretty much trash them or use them for ender chests. However, they'll point you to the closest structure. So it might not always be the end cities, but it will point you to something good. Speaking of end cities, their route is mostly unchanged, except when it comes to the elytra. Once you come into here, you do not get the elytra. You get the punisher. And the Punisher is a little silly, because here's what it does. It's a whip, and once it lands, it will create an explosion. It's already a bomb whip. So, of course, it's pretty strong, has knockback, fire aspect, and has smite too. So, you can use it as a pretty good melee weapon. You can even go fishing with it. Sadly, no easter eggs found in that. And while you're here, you might even find some star flares. They're pretty hard to spot considering they're only particles, but if you find an area that seems to be glowing for no reason, then assume it's a star flare. These will be needed for later on. But for now, keep exploring. If the Witherstorm gets too close, use Super TNT. Use Gateways if you're absolutely out of options. And then, eventually, you'll find yourself the End Citadel. Note, you can use a tainted gem here as well, in case you're having trouble finding it, since it's a pretty low-lying structure. In here, we have the Ruined Citadel, which is the redstone heart location for this dimension. Once you go inside, it's a pretty simple, well, pagoda? Not even pagoda, I'm not even sure how to describe it. Be careful of the floors though, they're trapped and they will attempt to kill you, so be careful around here. So as you navigate this place, you'll find yourself shulkers, some panels, nice good treasures, even some shulker boxes mixed in with the normal shulkers too. However, once you do enough exploring, you'll inevitably find, well, one, bad chests, but two, the golems. And the golems are not very nice, so in here, this room right here has an ender golem. And this thing will wake up. And be careful of the traps. And this thing is pretty strong. And of course, it will also use void runes. Make sure to block its attacks. It's like a faster, weaker monstrosity. So, of course, make sure you have good armor. And then eventually you'll take it down. I was using a fiery sword you know, Hydra tier equipment, and that took it down pretty quick. Now I have the Void Core, and this thing is pretty good for crowd control. I'd say it beats out both the Shoulder Cannon and the Soul Cannon, although the Soul Cannon can be used against a Witherstorm still, and has larger AoE. Once you take down these Shulkers, and get more panels from these chests in here, then you can go down to the lower levels, the lower levels are what you think they are, more golems. Once you do enough searching in this place, you'll enter the bottom chamber. And this is where you fight the Ender Guardian. Inside these trapdoors here, which you have to pry open manually, you'll encounter this boss arena. One final thing about this structure before I move on to the boss. Ironically, there are no obsidian trap blocks despite them existing. So you know. You don't have to exercise extreme caution when going over obsidian. Only when you're going over purpur and endstone. And in here, once you're ready, I recommend this gear. This is what it's balanced around. Get a better shield than normal shields. Get gravitite or xanite or something like that. A bow would be nice. The void core is a very, very good item for this. And once you're ready, walk up to the podium. This will summon the ender guardian. And this thing is an absolute monstrosity to deal with, pun intended. And it will deal a bunch of damage whenever it does hit you. I have very high levels of regeneration for recording purposes, but when it teleports to you, of course, it's going to disable your shield. You're going to have to choose what attacks you actually want to dodge, and which ones you're gonna tank. I'd recommend tanking that one, because although it's quite painful, Still, it's going to be in that well right there. So, if you can take that, then you'll be getting a lot of hits in. 
but of course you can also block it. I'm not going to judge too hard. The uppercut right there is definitely something you want to block. It's its most damaging attack until phase 2. If you want to damage it without getting super close, use the Void Rune, and the Punisher also works. In fact, the Punisher inflicts a hilarious amount of knockback. You can even use it as a parry of sorts with really good timing, although its range is pretty low. So keep all this in mind when taking down the Ender, the Ender Guardian. Once you've dealt enough damage to it, its helmet will break, revealing that it's actually a glorified shulker. In this phase 2, it now has the ground slam, which can be evaded by using the endings of the arena. However, it is very, very damaging, so keep that in mind. But now there's a lot of room, and you can potentially even dodge its gravity wells if you're running fast enough. Once it's taken enough damage, well, it will be defeated. It will fall over, and then, well, the shulker doesn't care about dying, so it teleports away to avoid dying. And then it will drop a bunch of loot. Some good XP, a charm of life, you'll have to get the panels from the rest of the area, but you'll get a seeker bow, which does exactly what you think it does. It seeks nearby enemies. So, you have a homing bow, and now you're in the end. By now, you should have all the treasures, which means you're faced with a decision. Leave or uh, leave. Use an end gateway to get away, and then you'll be ready for the final leg of your journey. But make sure that you have at least one char away, so that way you can make a command block tool in order to complete the Witherstorm fight. Once you have your panels and redstone heart, make sure that they're in your inventory properly, not in a shulker box or bundle, so that way it actually looks like this. Then you'll be ready for the symbiote. If you're bored of waiting around, you can use a teratoma, which you can check the recipe of using just enough items. For reference, here's its recipe. It's pretty simple, does cost a diamond though, but most likely you'll need it anyways for the refight Witherstorm. So if you want, you can toss it up in order to get a free symbiote, well not free, but quick, or you can do it all normally and wait around for it. The Teratoma is probably the safer option though. And once that's all done, then somewhere the symbiote will be nearby. Now. For the symbiote fight again, there's going to be a lot more flaming skulls. The amount is being toned down in the next update, but overall, this is like this first symbiote fight, except it's going to be attacking a little bit more, and overall is going to be more difficult. So make sure that you're prepared for this, because this pretty much acts as the barrier to get to the rest of the wither storm. Although I'd say it's probably harder than most of the command block fight, Still, if you're able to handle this, then you're likely to be able to handle the bowels. Otherwise, there really isn't much to say. Once the symbiote is slain, it will fly down and the hole will open. Once inside the bowels, your first instinct would be immediately run for the command block. Problem, there's something you need in the bowels, thalmic paper, which is needed for the command block book. And another problem, I mean, you can see it right here. Everything is armed to the teeth. And in the refight, they'll even get some steel leaf armor and other uh, completely awful things to deal with. So your goal here is to explore the tunnels and open chests. You'll need three thalmic paper. It's around a 40% chance per chest. So of course you might get a little unlucky. I evidently do not have all the luck in the world. So with that, you open a bunch of chests, you get your paper, and then you can craft your command block. So get your crafting table, well, two of them actually, and then you have all of this in this order, and then you'll get your command block. Note, I do not know if you can place a command block in survival. I do not want to be the one to lose a run to that, so be very careful. Then you can combine it, and what do you know? Command block, sword. Ignore the fact that it's weaker than the fiery sword. And then you can start the fight. Here's the thing though, this fight is a lot harder, mainly because one, you're probably worn down from all the mobs in the bowels, 
Note, you can deal with these by lighting up the area so that way they don't respawn. And two, well you can't escape anymore. The command block decided that running away is no longer a strategy you should be able to do, so it locks the door, while spewing a ton of fireballs and summoning enemies from all across the mods. So make sure to take those on, and then you'll be able to hit it again, but not before handling its elite mobs. These can be relatively powerful mobs, I mean you can see this ground right here, and then you can potentially get a Charway Armored or Zombie, like that, and potentially some worse things. Luckily, it's being toned down a little, so hopefully you won't be the one to find out that there's a Fiery Armored Piglin Brute. Note, you can toss them down the hole, and that will kill them instantly. So, do that in order to take all these mobs down relatively quickly. With those mobs now handled, you can hit the command block again. I recommend before the fight, hopefully you're not watching this mid-fight, build yourself an obsidian or otherwise normal staircase up to the command block. It will get very, very chaotic in phase 3. So hit it again, it will get mad and then slowly rise up, you know, typical command block stuff, get angrier, and then it will summon the tentacles. If you kill the tentacles enough, then they will be removed from the battle. But, of course, they will come back before then. Kill a symbiote, and then once you kill the symbiote, you can now take down the command block another hit. But of course, be careful, since there's even more mobs in here, and things that you're probably not comfortable dealing with. So, unless you've 100%ed the mod pretty much before going into this, you're likely to face a new threat that you've never encountered before, so be prepared especially for these withered iron golems. In the final phase, there will be a symbiote also following you around. You'll have to deal with both heads, and once you take down both heads, then it will decide, you know what, that's not enough, it's time to have spawners. So, along with spewing fireballs, it will spew spawners. Nope, they're going to spawn, well, bad things. And you have to break all these spawners, despite all of the dragon's breath around. But if you go through and destroy all the spawners, dealing with all of the various mobs throughout all the dimensions, then it will be vulnerable for the final hit. I recommend straight up ender pearling up here. And then finally, it will be done. The Witherstorm will finally die. The Witherstorm, now defeated means that your world is now free to be explored. Considering there's a lot of content, I mean, Blue Skies and End are very, very tough places to do with the Witherstorm. Well, you can explore them freely and gear up. I highly recommend trying Blue Skies, or at least to do it in one of your runs, since it's a very interesting experience. But, inside the ruins of the Witherstorm, get yourself some tainted sand, some tainted flesh, and then you'll be able to forget about this place. All you need to do is create the withered beacon for now, and have the capacity to build its support beacons. If you're paying attention during the part 3 and part 4, I mean this is part 4, but anyways, you need some star flares, which you can get from Blue Skies, The End, or The Nameless Sorcerer, which is to be talked about in the next part of this tutorial. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, and, well, the series is coming to a close pretty soon. Once part 5 is done, I will be back to doing building tutorials, and that will pretty much be how my channel runs for a while. So, enjoy the rest of your day, Gearsaw out.